I work in the European External Action Service as a Ukraine desk in the division on Eastern Partnership. I work for the European External Action Service uh, in the Western Balkans division. For the moment, mostly I'm following everything which is related to negotiations of the new EU-Ukraine Association Agreement. We actually, as European External Action Service, since the entry into force of the Lisbon Treaty, we hold the presidency, the permanent presidency of these working parties. So in fact, we chair these meetings on a permanent basis as it used to do the rotating presidency. We are in contact with, with member states, diplomats, with diplomats from the countries of the region we are taking care of, like for example Ukraine who are interested, but also um, the US mission working here in Brussels is interested what uh, is the policy of the EU towards Ukraine um, as they are closely following that. I have a diploma in European Business Administration. It's a double diploma that I finished in, in London and I started in Madrid. Um, after that, I specialized in, in foreign trade. I studied at the European University Viadrina in Frankfurt an der Oder, which is a German-Polish project. Um, with a, and there I studied cultural science. And at the same time, I did international relations at the University of Wrocław because I'm half Polish, half German. So I tried to do a dual education system in that time, a pre-accession country, Poland and in Germany. Immediately after I, I, I completed my diploma, I applied for an internship in the Commission. So that was my first experience with the institutions. That didn't lead immediately to, to a job as an official, but it was a, an experience that I enjoyed and I really appreciate it. I started in Brussels working in the European Parliament as a political assistant to an MEP to a member of the European Parliament, um, which is a political job and it depends on the career and the political re-election of, uh, of the member of the European Parliament. At that time I've been already focusing on, on foreign relations and especially on enlargement and neighbourhood policy with a focus on Turkey. And uh, after having passed the concours uh, for the institutions to become an official, a fonctionnaire, I joined uh, the Commission in the field of foreign relations, which was uh, uh, in line with my interest, which I had earlier. So I've been uh, very lucky of, uh, of joining that part which was now transferred to the European External Action Service. I took a contract with the, the delegation of the European Commission in Moscow, where I dealt with uh, technical assistance projects. And then in, in that particular time, I took my exams. And once I, I've passed the exams, I was invited to take a job in, in Brussels as part of the office of the personal representative of the high representative at the time, Javier Solana. In the Western Balkans, I had had very, very good experiences cl working closely, very closely with, with member states, which is very important and which we do not forget uh, when, when dealing with, with, with external action. And uh, for example, I accompanied recently member states to a field trip to Montenegro, and we had all sort of very high level political uh, meetings from the president of the country to the prime minister, to the foreign affairs minister, to the secretary of state. And, and that was also very rewarding because this, er this particular area of the world looks at the EU with, 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 with admiration and with a, with a sincere desire to be part of, of our project and I think that's, that's very rewarding. What I also very much enjoy is actually going directly to the country, um, going on mission and to meet the people, uh, the local people who are present to meet our counterparts from the Ministries of Foreign Affairs of the country and to actually understand better what uh, the situation on the ground is. Um, this direct context helps you a lot, especially in negotiations, to understand their position, to understand their fears or to understand why they are asking the questions they are asking during our negotiations. Those meetings that we spent with the United Nations, for example, were very important in the sense that you felt really part of the European Union project. As regards negotiations, I was traveling mostly once a month to Ukraine or Moldova. Um, sometimes we travel to, to, to Strasbourg to the European Parliament in order to, to debrief colleagues on the state of play uh, where we are. Um, this is the frequency and I've been, yes, in Ukraine and Moldova and I'm going to Georgia soon, so which is uh, quite interesting. I've been to many, many places and I feel very lucky that I have, been, I have had the opportunity through my job to get to know places that would have been difficult to, 
to, to visit uh, otherwise. I, I, I've spent, like, for, I remember, for example, a couple of weeks in, in Togo uh, working on a specific project. I've been to Australia and New Zealand on, on, on important uh, um, multilateral meetings representing the European Union, and I've been to South America and to the States. So that, that's, that's, that's been certainly uh, an incredible opportunity of my job. Every traditional diplomatic service has the idea of having people work both in headquarters and on the ground in, a, in an embassy or in our case in an EU delegation. I think uh, people who are not open to that um, might prefer to choose another part of the EU institution than working on foreign relations. I think this is one of the assets to have the possibility to go and work uh, abroad to understand really the country we are developing EU policies for. Working language uh, in our department is uh, almost exclusively English. Obviously you use uh, language like uh, your own mother tongues, uh, which is for my case Polish and German, when you talk to colleagues from member states. And uh, um, I've been studying in French, so uh, this uh, language is also used. However, in negotiations, as our negotiations are conducted half, partly in English or in Ukrainian, uh, it is very, very good for me with my Polish background and uh, having learned Russian to understand Ukrainian. I use French and English currently in, in my job. This is um, important, I mean, not only important, it's, it's necessary for anybody working in external relations. French and English are the two working languages. In fact, in our meetings with member states, there's no interpretation. Uh, contrary to other areas of work in the field of external relations, there is this agreement that at working level uh, working group level at least, uh, French and, 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 and English are equally, are at the, at the same level and they can be used equally. The international working environment is also one of the most attractive aspects of, of my work here and um, it, actually I'm very proud of, of having made the decision to work here. Is it still rewarding? Is it still exciting? I enjoy it very much. Um, also because of my personal background, because I'm German-Polish, so um, it is something which I always wanted to be first of all European and then perhaps German or Polish. Mm -hmm.